Hi, it's Stu Richards, and uh, welcome to our latest FastCast. Uh, today, I'm excited to be joined by Mackenzie Pedroza, who is the Director of Marketing at Brightflow AI, to talk about using data in SMB content. And what I wanted to do as folks are logging in is just to give you, for those of you who haven't been part of a Braden FastCast before, a little bit of an overview of what we're all about, which in short, is helping clients to ultimately achieve their revenue goals in the small to mid-sized business segment. And that often raises the question, what do you mean uh, when you say SMB? We think of SMBs as companies with up to 500 employees, but we've worked with clients whose definition includes revenue or stage of growth or spend or seat licenses or <laughs> all kinds of things. And you know, we have clients who are really interested in looking at SMBs by industry or you know, women and minority owned businesses or lots of other attributes. So um, within the SMB space, you know, we've done a lot of work for the folks here um, that you can see. Uh, and the common thread is that everything we do is designed to help our clients either to better understand SMBs through research uh, or to engage them via outbound programs. And specifically what we do in terms of conducting research is a pretty broad range. So analytically, or I should say methodologically, we're pretty agnostic. We do qualitative research via one-on-ones or focus groups uh, to really explore SMB you know, feelings, emotions, attitudes. Um, and we do a lot of quantitative work, um, which can be done via agile research, you know, via quick tests, uh, or full custom online, uh, or a combination of quantitative and qualitative. Um, the kinds of things that we research for clients really vary. You can see in the orange topics columns, all kinds of things from understanding purchase intent to brand perception to segmentation to, you know, you name it. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, the research that we do is really designed to support our clients either in optimizing their go-to-market strategy, you know, for example, whether it's helping with the selection of the media to use to reach their audience or the messaging that's going to resonate best, um, to optimize product strategy to help them understand where the trade-offs are between, you know, functionality and development costs, for example, to understand pricing um, and to optimize the user experience. Um, whether that's through, you know, pre-launch uh, assessments or, uh, you know, post-launch uh, kind of usability tests. Um, and the other thing that we do with research is to support our clients in their marketing efforts, specifically via outbound. So we do a lot of research that's designed to generate data that our clients use in content, uh, which we will be talking about today, um, but as well as to form the basis for PR campaigns, uh, social campaigns, and even for the development of sales and event collateral. Um, the other thing that we do is to create that content for clients. So in a lot of cases that um, content might be based on search, as I mentioned, that supports the uh, development of content, which can take, of course, a variety of forms, or we develop content for clients that's based on uh, the development of more advisory uh, kinds of content. Um, you know, how to information uh, or lots of other topics. Um, whatever we do, you know, in terms of developing content that we really want to make sure that it's relevant to your audience and provides actionable insight um, that enhances your position as a trusted advisor and moves them through the sales cycle. So anyway, that's Braden. Uh, but the real reason you're here is to hear about uh, using data to optimize a content marketing program for SMBs. Um, so what I wanted to do before I bring Mackenzie on stage is to go through a little bit of research that we did not too long ago around the information sources that small and mid-sized business owners use as they're going through the buying process, which we define simply as awareness, research, and purchase. So. Um, we asked a total of 500 small to mid-sized business owners via our uh, Pulse, the SMB Pulse, um, which is a monthly survey of 500 U.S. SMB principals. Um, and we asked them um, a variety, uh, how they rate a variety of information sources uh, as they move through the sales cycle. There were a total of 42 different sources that we looked at, but here we've just called out 
um, the specific individuals or companies that they rely on. Um, and, you know, we talk about the use of data and content and part of why it is um, useful is that uh, small business owners really want to hear from their peers. You know, as you well understand, I'm sure peers are a really important source of information um, because they're objective and unbiased. So they're a really great way to uh, learn about new products and services, but also to get a sense of what the experience is like using them. And, you know, is it as good, you know, for example, as the market and materials say, or what the ratings are on, you know, G2, for example. So you can see here out of the individuals that we asked them about, which include peers, you know, your sales representative, bloggers or influencers, you know, their accountant, their CFO or their technology consultant or an MSP, um, peers are number one. Uh, with the exception of for the very biggest businesses. These columns, by the way, the bars, um, the blue ones are for very small businesses under 20 employees. And you can see they rely most on peers as a way to learn about uh, products and services for their businesses um, more than any other of the individuals that we asked about. Same holds true for what we call small businesses, those 20 to 99 employees. A little bit different for the biggest businesses. They're more likely to rely on bloggers or influencers, but still, you know, peers for them play an important role at the awareness stage. At the research stage, um, peers play, you know, perhaps even more of an uh, important role where uh, for very small businesses, um, they are number one. Uh, for small businesses, again, 2099 employees, they're number two, but pretty close behind vendor sales representative. Uh, and for the biggest businesses, they actually become number one. So, you know, peer word of mouth is really important for how small business owners learn about and make, you know, ultimately research and make a purchase decision uh, on your product. Um, and then finally, at the purchase stage, you can see uh, peers, you know, they're not number one anymore, actually, they're not even in the top three, uh, but they're still, you know, they play an important role. So really, uh, you know, key takeaway from these three slides is business owners want to hear from their peers. And what that means for you is, you know, apart from anything you're doing to generate referrals that conducting surveys of small business owners and playing back to business owners, the advice and experience of their peers is a great way to engage them. Uh, in terms of how to do that, we also asked um, in our survey of information sources about the specific content formats that um, businesses use to learn about, uh, conduct research on, make a final purchase decision. So you can see, you know, a research report, which is, of course, the logical use of survey data, um, doesn't rate in the top three in terms of how they learn about products and services. Now, the caveat here, of course, is that you don't only put your survey data in a research report. You could, of course, feature it in an article or an email newsletter or a video or a webinar, uh, lots and lots of other ways. But if you look at it exclusively as, you know, research report for uh, as an outlet for your research um, you know it's not in the top at the awareness stage however um, it is at the research stage especially for bigger businesses those with uh, 20 to 500 employees it's the number one way that they say they conduct research on your offerings again in the context of content formats uh, and it's number three for the smallest businesses a little bit lower again as they get to the purchase stage but again um, conducting the survey playing back the results uh, via a research report or other kinds of content uh, is a very important uh, way to engage uh, SMBs by playing back uh, the advice of their peers. So what I wanted to do is bring Mackenzie on board uh, to tell us about her experience, both at Intuit, where she was before Brightflow and now at Brightflow, um, in using data uh, to uh, enhance the effectiveness of content as a way to engage SMB. So, Mackenzie, welcome. Thank you so much, Stu. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah, your audio is great, and uh, thank you for joining us. Of course. Thanks for um, having me. Sure. So before we start on the topic uh, at hand, I'd love to hear about Brightflow, Mackenzie, you know, what you do there, what Brightflow does for SMBs, and even how you define SMBs at Brightflow. Great. Yeah, we, um, so I, I lead marketing at Brightflow AI, which is a um, fintech platform 
um, empowering small and medium sized businesses to take control of their cash flow. We have a financial software platform. We have um, like a credit business credit scoring tool and a financial um, advisory program that helps people become more lendable for their businesses. Um, and then we also have, if you know, a business needs some financing and they're are super well qualified, then we're able to lend them or connect them to other lenders as well. Um, so data plays a super critical role um, in our business, and um, you know, it really helps us build trust with um, those folks. Uh, our, our potential prospects and customers. Mm -hmm. And um, I dragged everyone through some research we did on, you know, information sources. And I wanted to get a sense of how your experience, you know, at Intuit and now at Brightflow aligns with those findings around the importance of peers and uh, how important you found playing back uh, peer insights in data is for content marketing initiatives to the SMB audience. Yeah, peer, um, peer data is huge, I think, um, especially depending on who your audience is. So at Intuit, our audience was, um, a, for my line of work, um, in my content marketing, my platform was uh, a big audience of ours was accountants. And accountants are sole proprietors. And so they don't have a lot of, well, they do, a lot of them are members of networks, but a lot of them are not. And um, mm -hmm. they see their sort of peers as maybe competitors. And so, one thing that data and research can do for them is provide all this benchmarking data that can allow them um, to get insights on what their peers are doing if they're not as well connected to a network of peers or a community um, of other accountants and help them um, benchmark their rates, what their, you know, what their focus is, different types of things that they might not feel comfortable talking about with others against an, you know, a group of like-minded uh, peers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so oh, that's great. And what would you say, you know, in terms of the role of content in your SMB marketing efforts, like how integral or important would you say it is, you know, in general and, you know, compared to other tactics you use? So content plays a super critical role in our marketing. Um, everything that we try to put out to our prospects or our uh, customers is has to be super useful, super applicable, and add a ton of value. I think um, one of the reasons why research is so important to us is it really helps our customers, our prospects, just even our readers on our blog, make better decisions. I think data from research is really, really critical when done well um, to make your audience's lives easier save them time getting this data themselves, um, you know, save them money, make them more money, um, and really sort of, um, I would say advocate for themselves with maybe uh, other management or things like that, where you're just giving them the data to make those decisions. Um, putting that into our content has been a complete, I think, game changer in keeping us both at Brightflow AI and at Intuit, when you put the content or put data into content and, and build content off of real verifiable data um, at a place like Brightflow AI, you know, you we are using this content at earlier stages um, in the sales cycle to build trust, to build credibility. We are, um, you know, really trying to relate to our customers or our prospects with this data. So we are trying to find out what their true pain points are, what their real challenges are, what solutions we can offer to them before they're even a customer. That really builds trust, it builds credibility, um, and it helps us prove our value before they've even started working with us. I think at a place like Intuit that's more um, established, a brand like QuickBooks is the industry leader. And so there is an expectation that you are going to have high quality content. You're going to have data backed insights in your content. Um, you are going to, it, you're really just trying to meet their expectations because they feel like a brand like Intuit should have world-class content straight out the door. Um, and so it's equally vital at a brand like that to prove that you can kind of meet those expectations. Um, and so for both types of businesses, newer or more established, it's it's really, really important. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned, Mackenzie, that uh, you know, you're playing this data back in a variety of formats. Um, are mm -hmm. you finding that it's like equally across, effective across formats or are there are particular formats that really lend themselves well to the use of data? Um, definitely, I think if you have a 
customer or a prospect or even just a visitor to your site that consumes a specific type of content, um, any content type can really be made more impactful and more valuable by including data. Um, for us, you know, our favorite is really a guide or a white paper used as a lead magnet um, where you're sort of exchanging lead data for so that somebody's email or contact information um, for access to a really needy downloadable piece of content. Um, and that helps us drive leads first of all i think second is you can spin off anything from that guide so you can create a checklist from the insights from the guide you can write articles you know we typically will take a guide and, and do a webinar on the insights featured inside of a guide or a white paper we'll do um, a video ideally there's some videos in the works right now um, on our side right now um, and really um, one that people might not think of is like conference speaking opportunities. You can really um, take a freshly created study and pitch your CEO or yourself or a thought leader in your um, in your network to go to an event and and really speak about these insights and share them. And you know we have had tremendous success. We would time our releases of our research and, and things that we did over at QuickBooks and Intuit, um, and we've done a little bit about that. Uh, with that at Brightflow AI, time that so that the release of those those um, study results can be um, aligned with maybe a busy season or a or conference season in your industry, um, and that's been mm -hmm. that's been great for us as well. Mm -hmm. That's great. And are you finding you know if the guide is a centerpiece, are you typically making that a registration required kind of a lead gen piece, or are you using it more to drive awareness? How do you see that at the you know across the stage of the sales cycle? Yeah, well, we stretch ours out. <laughs> we stretch the use of ours out. So maybe for the first couple months that we featured on the site, we try to really make the insights evergreen um, and try to use it for as long as possible. So what we might do is feature it as a lead gen where um, piece, like you mentioned, where you need to register to get access to it. Um, and for the first couple of months and then we might turn it into you know a, a page on our website and let people sort of ungate it and let people peruse it for free um and use use that as sort of an seo opportunity um to continue to um drive results for certain organic keywords um to our site as well and, and ungate that after a little while Mm -hmm. yeah. And you raise an interesting tactical question, which is one we get a fair amount, but how long do you think data is useful? Like, what do you see as a shelf life in content? We're probably <laughs> a bad person to ask about that because <laughs> <laughs> we use it for as long as humanly possible, or maybe we're, I'm a good person to ask about that. You know, we, um, the last research survey that we did with you, so you don't uh, know this, I don't think, but we did a research report um, around volatility in the market and um, it's sort of taken on a second life. We did it last fall. We now have additional insights we can kind of offer based on the research that we received from the survey we did with you, but we're on our eighth mm -hmm. piece that we're uh, creating from that survey. <laughs> so mm -hmm. we have created a guide, a checklist, um, an external article, internal articles, um, webinar type videos, um, a speaker pitch where our um, CEO was offered a keynote <laughs> mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. when we pitched um, his, him as a speaker with these insights um, video. And then um, we're actually taking verbatim that we got uh, from the people responding to sort of open-ended questions. We're taking those verbatims mm -hmm. and now making those into its own guide um, mm -hmm. because we thought that actually once we dove into everything that you know our SMB's audience were recommended, um, to each other and to their peers, we thought, well, this is actually has a ton of meat in it and we can create this as sort of um, a, an attachment to sort of some prospecting and marketing nurture drip type campaigns that we're going to be doing um, that offers real value in people's inbox. Um, so we'll we'll test that out and let you know how it goes, but we stretch it out for a very long time. Um, and mm -hmm. uh, we we definitely are on, yeah, like our eighth piece now of creating. And I'm so sorry I didn't answer your question earlier when you said, how do we think about SMBs? Um, our smart, small to medium sized businesses um, at Brightflow AI right now um, are really in sort of the 
one, you know, below $1 million in revenue, mm -hmm. all the way up to like $40 million in revenue per year. Um, so we have actually a pretty wide ranging idea of what a small or medium sized business could be. Um, and so we really try to tailor our insights, not to everyone, but to really certain elements of um, each audience. And we think that we can certainly address different parts of this sort of wide ranging audience um, in specific ways. Mm -hmm. Great. And um, I assume when you're developing a campaign, and I love that you're getting eight months worth of content. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. fantastic. Um, are you also integrating um, PR and social uh, as part of that campaign? Yeah, we are. We, um, we have used the study results to sort of pitch media, um, pitch journalists with um the survey results you know you can certainly do a press release we try to offer the um, survey results as an exclusive and so we pitch journalists on an exclusive um, we ended up partnering with a contributor to entrepreneur and we were able to place sort of our survey results um, into his article um, at, and as you probably guess, uh, you know, entrepreneur has a very much higher domain authority than our sort of two year old startup, three year old startup website. Um, and so we were able to get a really strong backlink um, directly to our website um, by partnering with um, either a contributor or, you know, we have gotten media coverage of it linking back to our website. And so from SEO perspective and sort of from a PR perspective, that's super helpful and it just continues to build trust um, across the board by by doing that in PR, um, and you had said PR and which other? Yeah, and social. And social, Just, yeah, I mean, that's everything we put out. We certainly, as long as it's not, you know, um, something that we're offering just specifically to our customers or to our, um, you know, specific prospects or a specific list, we do kind of push that out on social. Our team is is great on social and, and they're the um, sort of, individual sort of quotes that you can do. Um, you can pull out little pieces of each research, of, of parts of the research and, and tweet that out or um, do individual posts on just individual data points. Um, that really stretches out the length and the life, the lifespan of your content. Yeah, no, oh, that's great. Um, so I'd love to get your, the kind of summation of your wisdom and experience, because what, <laughs> what would you say are your best practices and, developing a research plan for a content campaign? Yeah, I think this is sort of um, something that should be a marketer's best practice across the board, but it really applies to research as well. And that's to really imagine sort of your perfect world, best case scenario of what you would ideally love to kind of be delivered at the end of a survey result. What types of results really you're looking for? Um, start with the end result you want and sort of work your way backwards. You can't manufacture the responses you'll get, um, but what that does is really ensure that you ask all the right questions, you cover all of your bases, you don't forget to ask something because you already imagined the answer you might wanna get from it at the end. Um, and then, you know, you really ensure you're learning everything you wanna know about this topic. And it might also help you ask maybe the question in the same question in a couple different ways so that you are more likely to get the types of responses you're looking for. I think that would be mm -hmm. the first the first one, kind of imagine your perfect world, work your way back. Um, <clears throat> I would say second is sort of asking um, the most important questions that you have while you have a captive audience. Um, you know, we, I, I asked my leadership um, and leaders of other departments if they had questions, if we had, you know, sort of this N number, we use 300 for our research survey, but if we had 300 people in our, um, you know, ideal customer profile in front of us and could ask them anything, what would we want to ask them? And the hardest part was trimming down the number of questions, but really you can use a couple questions in your survey to address questions that you might have internally, even if you don't end up using them um, for, you know, your marketing. I'd say yeah. tailoring your findings um, also to different audiences and um, mm -hmm. different purposes. Um, you have so much data that you can really, really stretch it if you're really strategic about how you're using the results and who you're sort of tailoring them to. Um, mm -hmm. And that could be, you know, your customers, your prospects, or media. 
Um, and then I say finally kind of saving some of the more surprising and interesting um, ideas for reporters for you know use in things like speaking engagements and things um, anything that would really catch people's attention pique anyone's interest um, you know really um, make sure that you save those for the most important audience for your marketing efforts um, and mm -hmm. then the meteor stuff you don't have to tell you know you can save the meteor more helpful useful uh, bits for your customers and the people you're really trying to help mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's great. Um, and what are you finding? Uh, and those are really uh, well earned learnings. <laughs> those are great. Thank you. Um, and then, you know, once you've got all of those learnings and the data, which, you know, you ask, you want to ask a million questions and you cut it a whole bunch of different ways, like by size or by attitude or by age or whatever, um, how have you found the best ways to promote it? Are you finding, you know, PR or uh, organic social or uh, paid organic um, or a variety of tactics to be most effective? Yeah, a variety for sure. I mean, definitely you want to get it out onto your social media um, channels on LinkedIn. You know, people on LinkedIn share things, um, you know, so far and wide. Sometimes you're seeing just likes on your you know colleagues LinkedIn posts from people you don't even know. And so definitely get it out on your social channels because people it will go farther and wider than you even imagine, even if you only have a few followers. Um, I would say do a press release and pitch journalists, even if you, you know, try to tie it maybe um, to a current event. Um, any of your data right now, if we did this survey again with you, we would absolutely tie it to the current events. Um, everybody, every uh, journalist is looking for their own angle on current events when they cover them. And so if you have fresh data that they can use um, and maybe even just one little insight that has verifiable data behind it, then they are going to absolutely want to, to speak with you, um, especially if you can provide quotes, uh, customer mm -hmm. quotes or sources, your CEO or your subject matter expert in-house can be a spokesperson. And if you're willing to offer a quote and you tell the journalist that, they might be a lot more likely to um, ask you if they can use your research in their articles. Um, but really, you're only limited by how creative you can be <laughs> to this. So um, there are a number of ways, I think, to just really try to think of all the different angles. And if you know, you're maybe not getting journalist coverage, and with the New York Times, then maybe think about how this might apply on an industry level and go to trade media and just get the coverage um, that you can get. And they will, you will actually build a trusted network of journalists who would come to you for quotes after that um, and come to you for insights after that. And so it can be the start of a really great relationship if you provide value to the journalists the same way you would provide value to you know, your customers. And then definitely also use it in your newsletters and um, you know definitely promote it on your internal uh, outreach as well any any of your uh, internal communications I'd say and ask your ask your colleagues to share it as well mm -hmm. that's great these are many 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 great tips Mackenzie mm -hmm. um, and so I have one last question as we get down to the bottom of the hour um, you know the use of research and content is not free um, how have mm -hmm. you found it to be effective to develop a business case for management uh, to support, you know, a research-based content campaign? Yeah, I'd say, um, you know, it's great when you have a, a senior management that believes in content marketing and sees the value in that. I think you can um, use sort of an equivalent of how much you would be paying in advertising or things to get the same amount of um, coverage. Um, I would also say if you can get sort of buy in from other stakeholders and if you can, if you do have the luxury of sort of expanding your question set to include um, questions that product might want to know the answer to that uh, engineering might want to know the answer to that sales might want to know the answer to, you know, you can actually have then sort of company wide sponsorship of this and it can be used for more than just marketing the value then you know quadruples and so um mm -hmm. you know we we were really really surprised at how interested everybody ended up internally being in this survey because we did include kind of leadership from across the board from the start and so everyone was really invested in it and it really helped with selling the cost to senior management mm -hmm. Fantastic. Awesome. Well, Mackenzie, thank you so much. Um, and what I wanted to do is I'm just going to turn off my camera.
and um, go to the takeaways, uh, which Mackenzie articulated super well, um, starting with the end in mind. So, um, or, you know, we kind of think of it as, you know, Braden, like really being clear on your storyline, um, you know, making sure you've got a really clear angle, like I, and you know what it is. As Mackenzie, as I put it really well, you can't manufacture responses, but to the degree that you know what angle you want to tell and that you're not just, you know, replicating someone else's survey, but really hopefully coming up with interesting results, whether because they're topical, uh, you know, timely or a really interesting topic. Um, and then, uh, you know, asking the most important questions first, really <laughs> research best practice. Um, and, uh, you know, I think another point that Mackenzie made which is fantastic is thinking about all of your stakeholders like really making sure you've got questions uh, that can buy, get the support of your internal stakeholders like product or engineering or sales or you know other folks in the marketing team uh, and of course are going to be newsworthy for your target audience whether customers or prospects uh, or the media um, and then of course you know using the data strategically like really thinking about how are you going to play it out into content where is each piece uh, going to live across the sales cycle when do you sus sunset them uh, when do you open up gated content uh, you know as Mackenzie mentioned uh, and then you know I think Mackenzie made a great point in differentiating the way you use your data. So uh, making sure that you use really newsworthy pieces for events or the media uh, and the really meaty pieces uh, for your SMB audience. So with that, uh, I wanted to thank you for uh, attending our webcast today. And if we can bring a, be a value uh, in supporting your content marketing efforts to the SMB audience, whether through conducting research uh, and or developing the content that's based on that data, um, that's something that we uh, do a lot and would love the opportunity to support your team on if that's appropriate. Uh, if so, um, please shoot me a note. My email is here. Um, and uh, we, again, hope that these insights and uh, Mackenzie's wonderful expertise has been valuable. And we hope to see you on the next Braden Fastcast soon. Thanks very much. Have a great afternoon.